Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J-Man Time and today I have a video on rare World War II tanks of Iran. Now during World War II, Iran actually tried to maintain its neutrality and managed to do so during the first 23 months of the Second World War. That was until the 25th of August 1941 when the Allied powers of Great Britain and the Soviet Union invaded Iran in what was known as the Anglo-Soviet Invasion of Iran. During that time period, the Iranian army actually fought against both the Soviet and British forces on two fronts, but ultimately Iran was defeated in less than a week. By the 31st of August 1941, the Iranian army, led by Reza Shah Pahlavi, surrendered to the Allied powers, thus ending the campaign in Iran. Afterwards, both the British and Soviet forces occupied Iran all the way up until 1946, about one year after World War II. And during that time period, Iran was basically just a fuel mule for the Allied powers, providing fuel to both the Soviet and British armies during the Second World War. Iran is one of those Middle Eastern countries that isn't really well documented when it comes to armored fighting vehicles, especially during the Second World War. But Iran actually did have a large number of armored fighting vehicles, at least for the independent Middle Eastern countries. Keep in mind, during the years before World War II and during World War II, there were only four countries in the Middle East that weren't occupied by the British, the French, or the Russians. And those countries were Iran, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen. And out of those four countries, Iran was probably the second strongest, only behind Turkey in terms of the its military strength. In the 1920s and 30s, Iran actually reached out to a large number of countries in order to help modernize the Iranian army. And the leader of Iran, Reza Shah Pahlavi, first reached out to both Great Britain, Czechoslovakia, and Finland for armored fighting vehicles. So let's go over some of the rare vehicles used by the Iranian army during the Anglo-Soviet invasion of Iran in 1941. Iran, which used to be called Persia back in those days, didn't receive its first armored fighting vehicles until 1921. And this was back when Iran was under its previous Shah, Ahmad Shah Qajar, also known as Qajar Shah. And in 1921, Qajar Shah actually purchased the four to six of the British Rolls Royce armored cars to be used by his royal bodyguards. Persian Jamdarm. Now, the reason he did this is because Persia was in political turmoil at the time period. The leader Ahmad Qajar was seen as a weak leader, and this was largely due to the effects of World War I. During World War I, Iran was invaded by pretty much the main two fighting forces in the Middle East at the time, the Ottoman Empire and Russia backed by Great Britain. And many Iranians viewed the Qajar Shah as being too weak and ineffective. On top of that, he was seen as a British puppet. The reason being, in 1919, after World War I, he had signed what was known as the Anglo-Persian Agreement, which pretty much gave the British control, large control, over the Persian oil fields in the south. As a result, many Persian generals and commanders in the army cooked up a plan to overthrow Qajar Shah and they picked Reza Khan as the head of the coup. Finally, in 1921, Colonel Reza Khan overthrew Ahmad Shah Qajar or Qajar Shah and later became the leader of Iran in the post Qajar dynasty era of the mid to late 1920s. Starting in 1925, Reza Shah, or Reza Khan as he was born as, began modernizing the Iranian army. At the time, the only armored fighting vehicles in the Persian army were the Rolls Royce Model 1921 Indian pattern armored cars, which were actually purchased by Qajar Shah before he was overthrown in 1921. And these armored cars were fitted with one 7.92 millimeter Vickers machine gun. And they had a different turret than the original Rolls-Royce armored car of the First World War. The original Rolls-Royce armored car had a pot-shaped turret, while the Model 1921 Indian pattern had a dome-shaped turret. The armor thickness was still 12 millimeters, and the vehicle had a speed of 72 kilometers per hour, or 45 miles per hour, and a crew of between two and three. 
Now the Persian army at this time only had about four to eight of these Rolls Royce model 1921 armored cars and they were pretty much the only armored fighting vehicles in the Persian army until the 1930s. In 1925 Persia was renamed Iran which means land of Aryans in Persian or Farsi. And around 1934, the new Shah of Iran, Reza Shah Pahlavi, began ordering armored fighting vehicles from other countries that included Czechoslovakia and the United States. And the second purchase of armored fighting vehicles by Iran at the time were the American-made Marmon Harrington M1934 series of armored cars. Also known as the Marmon Harrington TH310 ALF Series 1 armored cars, and these were medium heavy armored cars that were constructed between 1933 and 1934. These vehicles were armed with a mixture of American and Swedish weapons. The main armament of this vehicle was 137mm Swedish Bofors M34 gun fitted in a turret and a Landsverk turret. The secondary armor was either one or two 7.92 millimeter versions of the American Colt M1919 light machine guns. The armor thickness of these vehicles were between 6 and 15 millimeters and the speed was 42 kilometers per hour or 26 miles per hour and they had a crew of between 3 and 4. Now, these were the first armored cars to be purchased by Iran from the United States but they weren't the only ones and 12 of these vehicles served in the Persian army during the Second World War. Now these vehicles were actually pretty advanced in terms of armored fighting vehicles used by Middle Eastern countries in the mid to late 1930s and during World War II. Around the same time, the Iranians had also purchased 12 La France TK-6 heavy armored cars. The La France TK-6 was an American heavy armored car that was originally designed in 1933. And these vehicles were fitted with one 37 millimeter modified SA-18 American Potex, a modified version or a slightly modified version of the same SA-18 used in the American six ton light tank, which was a copy of the French FT-17. The secondary armament were two 7.92 millimeter machine guns, one on the side and one in the rear. The armor thickness was between six and 20 millimeters and this vehicle had a speed of 83.6 kilometers per hour or 52 miles per hour and it had a crew of four and these were actually the fastest armored fighting vehicles to serve in the Persian army during the Anglo-Soviet invasion of Iran in 1941. In total, 12 of these vehicles were also purchased from the U.S. and they served in both the Persian army and the Persian military police also known as the gendarme. Only a year later, in 1935, Iran approached Czechoslovakia, which was one of the neutral European countries during the years before World War II. And at that time, Czechoslovakia was exporting a lot of their armored fighting vehicles to smaller or neutral nations, and Iran was one of their customers. And the first tanks to be purchased from Czechoslovakia was the Czech CKD TNHP series of light tanks, and these were actually the earlier versions of the Czech LT-38 series of light tanks, the same tanks that were later used by the German army during the invasion of Poland and France in 1939-1940. The early version of these vehicles had a slightly different armament and was slightly different than the standard version of the LT-38. In fact, these vehicles are sometimes nicknamed the Persian LT-38 series of light tanks as Iran was the only country to use these vehicles during the Second World War, these early versions of the LT-38. Now the CKD TNHP had a main armament of one 37 millimeter Skoda A4L 47.8 main gun and it had two machine guns, either a eight millimeter Vickers machine gun or check ZB series of light machine guns or tank machine guns. 
The armor thickness was between 8 and 30 millimeters, and the vehicle had a speed of 42 kilometers per hour or 26 miles per hour and a crew of three. These vehicles were custom built for the Persian slash Iranian army and they were delivered in 1935, making these the first true tanks to serve in the Persian army. 50 of the CKD TNHP series of light tanks were purchased by Iran just before World War II, and they were all delivered just before World War II. The Iranians also wanted to purchase the manufacturing machinery from Czechoslovakia, but this never happened as eventually Germany annexed Czechoslovakia in 1938. The Iranians also purchased the original prototype for the CKD TNHP series of light tanks. So technically there were 51 of these vehicles if you count the prototype. And these weren't the only tanks purchased from Czechoslovakia. The Iranians also purchased 50 CKD AH-4 series of tankets in the same year, 1935. And these were infantry support tankets that were designed earlier between 1933 and 1934. And Iran was actually the first country to import these tanks from Czechoslovakia. Now the main armament of these tankets was one 7.92 millimeter ZB-35 or ZB-37 heavy machine gun and a secondary armament of one 7.92 millimeter ZB-26 or ZB-30 series of light machine guns. The armor thickness was between 6 and 12 millimeters and the speed was 45 kilometers per hour or 28 miles per hour and it had a crew of two and 50 of these served in the Iranian army during the Anglo-Soviet invasion of Iran in 1940. Only 50 of these were purchased plus the original prototype bringing the number to 51 and just like the previous tank Iran actually wanted to mass produce these vehicles within their own country but Czechoslovakia was annexed by Germany and the Iranians were never able to purchase the manufacturing equipment. So when the British and Soviets invaded they only had about 50 of these vehicles still in running condition. And these were some of the most advanced tankets in the world at the time. The only tankets that were more advanced than these were the Polish TKS series of tankets, which some of those were fitted with 20 millimeter anti-tank guns. And the final tank series to be purchased by Iran just before World War II were the American Marmon Harrington CTL-1 and CTL-2 series of light tanks or tankettes which were purchased from the United States in the year 1940 just before World War II would break out in the Middle East. Now these were some of the rarest tanks to be purchased by Iran and Iran wasn't the only country to purchase these tanks. You also had Mexico and a few other um, neutral countries purchasing these vehicles as well. And these light tanks slash tankettes were constructed between 1937 and 1938. And these vehicles were fitted with one 50 caliber M2 Browning heavy machine gun and two 30 caliber M Browning M1919 light machine guns. And the armor thickness was between eight and 12.7 millimeters. The speed was 53 kilometers per hour or 33 miles per hour. And it had a crew of two. And 12 of these vehicles served in the Persian army. One original Marmon Harrington CTL-1 and 11 the CTL-2 series of light tank slash tanket vehicles. And these were used as infantry support vehicles by the Persian slash Iranian army in the years before and during World War II. Now, in total, the Iranians had about 200 tanks and armored cars 
from various periods over the past 20 years leading up to World War II. But ultimately, it wasn't enough to stop the British and Soviet forces, who combined had nearly 1,000 tanks and armored cars coming from both the Soviet Union and British-controlled Iraq and Syria. The Persian army, as I mentioned, only lasted about a week in terms of combat. The Iranian army only had 130,000 troops versus at least half a million British and Soviet troops in total. Um, on top of that, the Persian Air Force just wasn't anywhere up to date to deal with the newer British and Soviet aircraft. And that was pretty much it. The Iranians eventually surrendered on August the 31st, 1941, thus ending the Anglo-Soviet invasion of Iran and the beginning of the occupation of Iran, which lasted until 1946. So which of these rare armored fighting vehicles are your favorite? If I had to choose, my favorites would be the Czech CKD TNHP series of light tanks, and my favorite armored car would be the American La France TK6 series of heavy armored cars that were imported in 1934. So which of these are your favorites? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.